Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Stock Market Weekly Update. Apologies, I'm a couple of minutes late. Let me know you can uh, see and hear me in the box. Uh, we've got quite a lot to cover, as always. Uh, and I've got about six screens open and 100 slides to take you through the stock market. So, as I say, you should all be able to see and hear me. Just let me know in the chat box that indeed you can. And welcome one and all that uh, that are on here. Uh, the good news is I've got, well, I'm first back in the UK from all my travels. And secondly, I have got, uh, as I say, over 100 sites to take you through. So Clive, Rick, John, Tim, Raj and David, everyone, welcome. Let me know where you're from and if this is your first uh, one of these as well. Good. I can see Maria, Carwin, everyone else. Good, good, good. Now let's share all of this because it is a beautiful day in London and I'm sure you don't want to be in front of a computer screen I I well actually I do uh but because I love this stuff but you might not so let's get through it straight away the weekly update I'm gonna bring you right up to speed in terms of what my thinking is also in the hedge fund industry you get a lot of documents crossing your desk and some things my team will put in front of me which are interesting some things I will read I will put in front of you what I think is worth knowing and there won't be any of the generic blah 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 about macroeconomic policy and all the rest of it unless it's there to make us money from our stocks for our sip and isa i don't frankly care okay uh so that's what we're going to be very focused on by the way for those of you who are already on my great investments program uh don't forget i've got a dinner after this event this event's open to all of you on this webinar this one okay this isn't the dinner this is my event in parliament uh, after that, there is a dinner for those on the Great Investments Program. You should have received an invite to that. You should see that on your private Telegram channel. Uh, those of you on my Great Investments Program, you should see that on your private Telegram channel. So sorry for repeating myself about that. Uh, but this, you're all welcome to. There's the link, com forward slash CHN. It's a business networking event in Parliament I'm co-hosting. Uh, and open to everybody, so you could always meet me there. Now, let's talk S&P and forecasts and all of those important, important things as well. Uh, we've got Newcastle, we have got Oxford, great, second webinar, Birmingham, three, and uh, Leeds, yes, Lucas, my hometown of Leeds. I was born in beautiful Armley. The forecast to the upside, 5,400, you're about to see, I'm closer towards that end. And you can see, look with those dots. There's a lot of banks uh, and analysts who are also there as well at that top end, which I think is interesting. You, but more importantly, forget all of them. I'm going to tell you what I think, uh, which I'd rather go by what I think than what anybody else thinks. Interestingly, JP Morgan are all the way down there. And I own JP Morgan's shares, uh, which doesn't reflect on their ability to call forecasts. This is one of the problems we're going to try and address. This was in the Independent or the I uh, this week. I think it was just yesterday. This poor lady had written uh, in the paper, I'm 61. I've been paying my pension since 21 and I'll be working till I die. And that is bloody tragic. Because look, she started at 21. It's not like she started at 30. It's not like, you know, and by the way, I read the article, it's not like she had stopped at some point and thought I can't be bothered and all the rest of it. I'm going to show you what the problem is. And I didn't realize we had a pension crisis in this country until I started delving deeper into it. I mean, I knew there was fund managers performing nothing. And I knew some people's pensions wouldn't be enough. I didn't realize that we're not just talking at, say, the bottom of the pyramid, to use that term. We're talking about the mass middle as well. I think the only ones who are going to be doing all right are going to be in the top 1%, actually less than that, probably the top half percent. And you're going to see some of the numbers I'm going to show you in here with some new slides. Why? Now, it's a bit terrifying. I'm also going to tell you which stocks I like. I mean, these buggers uh, are to blame for a large part you're not going to believe this. So I looked it up yesterday. I hadn't realized they'd made the FTSE 100. St. James's Place are now one of uh, the 78th largest company in Britain. This is where it gets really bad. They're worth £3.5 billion. Pounds. They're worth £3.5 billion. Pounds. And they're appalling. I've not looked at a single fund of theirs. I've never heard anybody say anything nice about them, by the way, not even the newspapers, or when I go on TikTok and talk about this stuff. I hadn't realized just how much of a ripoff is going on. 
Uh, by the way, when I looked at my analysis to see if they ticked any of the boxes for for my picking shares, you'll be pleased and relieved to know they didn't pick us. They they sort of didn't. You know, as you'll know, I use um, I use a spreadsheet to go through value, growth, income, croaky, six. Yeah, and you know, I need all of these to be green. Uh, they didn't have any greens. Uh, you know, you can see even even some of the companies. I mean, most of these companies out of ten thousand I look at. Uh, that asset manager didn't. So like I've said before, and I really do mean it, I intend to create a billion dollar asset management company where we're not managing your money. We're showing you how to, you hold your money and you manage it yourself. These guys have got 900,000 clients. They're worth 3.5 billion. I think by just showing people how to do it, you can be worth a billion because that's a global problem. These guys just address a UK problem. Actually, they cause it. Um, that's from YouTube. I've done a whole load of videos on their various funds, and I'll touch upon that in a second. So where are we at the moment? Live news? Well, S&P 500, above 5,000. This is from yesterday. Uh, and of course, the US market's not open. The futures markets are open. And uh, Dow futures are edging higher. They are up 55 points, which means uh, it's going to be another up day for the markets. So where are we on that? The uh, this is from yesterday, and the S and P is at five thousand and one. The Dow was up one hundred and fifty one points, which back in the day when I was a young man, that was a lot. Now it's just like yeah, uh, let alone the Nasdaq is just going through the roof. And you're going to see what's happening. So there's been a few years where it's been time to make money on your pensions. It won't necessarily last forever. I don't know how long it'll last, but it's certainly there right now. Okay. Uh, so where are we? Hi, David from Holland, uh, Carwin from uh, Wales, Adam from Norwich uh, as well. Now, where are we? Uh, St. James's Place gives market a fright. I, I'm not going to keep talking about them. But when I've asked people what their problems are, these are the, these. this is how frequently they said these things. And we're going to talk about specific stocks in a second. Uh, in, in particular, I'm going to show you why these fund managers mess up things like Meta and what to do, what to do if you think the market's going to fall, how do you know when to get back in? And Meta is a really good example of that because of the extreme moves and it's a household name. And what to do now if you've got something which you think is overbought, why would you buy it now? What's the decision-making process in all those circumstances? Like I say, I think as a case study, it's a good one, and I'll come to that in a second. Uh, and why companies like that show you why fund managers can never make you money. Uh, they might make you four and a half percent a year, but so does my wise bank account, actually. So we here's are the main problems you'd said. Pension low returns over one to five years. IFA or wealth manager clueless or useless. I don't know how to sack my IFA. That's a major problem. Uh, and as I keep saying in these broadcasts, British people are more than happy to lose money just not to offend their IFA and get rid of them. There's some people who said, oh, it was a family friend. I'm like, that family friend is should be no friend of yours anymore. Uh, and then there's the others. I'm no, don't. Remember, IFA is a salespeople. They've sat an exam which my five-year-old son could sit, but they're salespeople. They're not fund managers. They're not managing capital. They are salespeople, okay? Uh, just as, you know, the guy who sold me, or rather sold my wife the car, he's not a driver. He's a salesperson, you know, so... And he's got a conflict of interest with you. Uh, this is sort of, I've played around with this a bit. Um, and I'm going to do more of these for people who send me their portfolios and want me just to do a, a calculation for them. Uh, because it can be done. Why not? Why not give that freely to people? Uh, and this makes a lot of assumptions, this one, by the way. And I'll tell you what they are in a second. Uh, you're on track to have 1.6 million at retirement. If you take 76,000 pounds out per year, this will last until the age of 90. So assume you're 52 and you plan to retire at 65. Now, I know there's some people on here who are younger, but you know, can play around with this. Com current combined pension pot. Let's say you've got half a million at the moment at 52. You might have a little bit less, a little bit more, but we can work on those later. And let's say you say, well, my desired annual income is 76,000, which I think, you know, that will get you a few hotels and a few uh, flights. By the way, can I give you a really top tip? One of the things people want to do in their retirement, of course, it's food, shelter, all the rest of it. Let's assume they've paid off their house by the time they retire, so they don't have a mortgage. Of course, they want to support their kids, and that's a separate thing. And they want to eat now and again at nice restaurants, and that's a separate thing. But, of course, one of the main things you want to do is you want to fly around the world. And you can find cheap hotels anywhere in the world. You know, you might fly to Laos and pick them up for nothing. I just got a meal for four people in India from my own town 
um, and that was one pound sixty. So I'm going to ignore food costs for a second, but I'm going to give you a really a top tip. And I said this to my wife uh, as well. Your major costs, one of your major luxury costs, okay, forget the everyday, is going to be flights. You and I know that. It's going to be flights. Okay, and I told my wife, I said, look, one of the things that pensioners are going to be paying, like her parents, is flight costs. So, you know, the, her parents will often say, we don't want to go travel because it's too expensive, blah, 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 and I get them the tickets. How do you reduce that without increasing your pension? So what I recommend you do is really look into how to build up your air mile points. I know it sounds stupid, but those points are your pension savings to some extent. Now, I know I'm talking to a small, minuscule group who want to be traveling in their older years and they want to be, you know, basically not paying top whack for flights long distance and they want to go beyond Europe, particularly in the winter months. They might want to go to Singapore or whatever. Build up those points. Um, I'll do a whole separate thing on points. I'm pretty good at this. Between the cards, which I always pay off, and I get double, triple points on British Airways and Virgin and all the rest of it. Um, I've got a pretty – I said this on the BBC once. I, I've got a pretty healthy points balance, which means my pension's going to go further, okay? Uh, obviously, I'll have a private jet by then, but you get my point. Um, but yeah, build up those points. BA have got a thing at the moment, and it's not a plug for BA, where for £2,000, you can get 200,000 points. If you get points for under one pence a point, one pence a point, that's the critical number. It's worth it. If it's over one pence a point, it's not worth it. Okay. Anyway, that's separate. I feel like Martin Lewis right now giving you that top tip, but it's one way to make your pension go further. Right. Sorry about that. Now, desired annual income 76. You might say that's too much, too little. Personal monthly contribution, you might say, oh, I wish I got 5,000. That's, that's your maximum SIP allowance, 60K a year. Well, if all of these numbers worked out, you'd end up with that. By the way, that's assuming a growth rate of next to nothing, like 4% growth and 2.5% um, inflation. So you can see, actually, some of this, this has got nothing to do with me and picking stocks or anything like that. This is just like assumptions of 4.5% and stuff. You can see it's worthwhile. I mean, if you start sooner, you make more. If you're looking for less income, you make more. But that's the problem. I'm afraid you are going to live to that long, probably. You know, it's a problem. I know. Okay. So I just wanted to show that as an illustration. I'll come back to some of that stuff later. I'm sure you've got a ton of questions on that stuff. Just let me know you're all okay and you can all hear me because I've not heard from people for a second. Now, these are price-to-earnings ratios, price-to-forecast earnings ratios, okay? Uh, red means expensive and overvalued. But as we now know, when people go, oh, I'll push, but Microsoft's overvalued, and they sit there, and for years they've said, I'm not going to touch it, it's overvalued. Did it ever occur to you that valuation is not the only thing which leads stock prices to move up? and your job is to make money, and therefore valuation is only one factor we look at. That's why I look at value, growth, income, cash flow, Sortino, alpha. I look at all of these things because I know. Oh, by the way, I didn't invent that. I just stole that from Eugene Famer, and I read about it in my books and my Financial Times columns 18 years ago. He went on to win the Nobel Prize in economics, okay, just pointing that out, that value isn't the only thing. Growth and dividend deals are also important. So are other factors like company size and volatility. And I look at all of those. But this really makes the point because guess what? These overvalued ones are the ones which are going up. And people go, oh, I'm not touching it. I'm not touching it. And your IFA will say, oh, don't go near those. Oh, no, they're overvalued because there's an idiot. Okay. Because they don't read. Well, they don't read my books, but they don't read the works of Nobel Prize winning economists on this stuff either. Okay. So that's where we are. You know who owns uh, a lot of those stocks, well, some of the richest people in the world, like, well, Bill Gates, for instance, or Elon Musk, for instance, uh, Jeff Bezos, for instance. What do those idiots know? No, you should consider them overvalued and definitely not going to. No, we look at value growth. We look at a lot of things. So whilst healthcare is relatively cheap and so is energy and banks, we also know valuation is not the only thing. Therefore, just because it's cheap doesn't mean I'll buy it. I need to see growth and dividend yields as well. Look at telecom services. That's interesting this year. AT&T, Verizon, Comcast, interesting. We'll have a look at some of those a little bit later on. In broad terms, what's happening at the moment? Uh, okay. Uh, and what you can see here, just it's a snapshot. Take a photo if you wish. Everything seems to be going up. That worries me a little bit. Uh, with the exception of Apple, which isn't going up, and there's a bit of a concern I've got on that, and I'll come into that uh, in a moment. And how do I deal with this? How do I deal with, let's say, and, and a great example is Meta how or NVIDIA. How do I deal with something which I think is ridiculously high, 
but making me money. What's the strategy? You've got to have a strategy, and the strategy cannot be, oh, listen to Alpesh. I'm sure he's got a crystal ball better than mine. Or I'll put a finger in the air. Or I'll just guess and get out too early. No, that's not a strategy. It's not even a tactic. That's just suicide, kamikaze mission. So I'm going to share the strategy with you, which works well enough. It's not as good as a time machine or a crystal ball, but it's done me fine. It's the next best thing, okay? And the str any strategy should make logical sense to you, and it should be something you can deploy if Alpesh falls under a bus. God willing, it doesn't. I try and avoid buses, okay? Uh, like I said, we're going to look at all of these factors as well. I need all these columns to be green. Why? Because we need to look at 10,000 stocks. Why do we look at 10,000 stocks? Well, because if you look from a narrow gene pool, as fund managers do, you are absolutely stuffed because how can you pick the best of the best if your gene pool is i'm only going to prick british companies well it's self-evident why that's going to screw you the FTSE 100 is up seven percent in the last 25 years now i'm as patriotic as the next person but for me patriotism doesn't mean getting punched in the face by my pension what it means is i'll buy the best stocks in the world bring that money to the uk and spend it in my local supermarket that's patriotism. I won't be a, a, a burden on the state because I've made sure my pension was going going up and up, not giving it to St. James's Place, getting slapped around for nothing. Uh, and then, but hey, I bought British. No, it means bringing money into the UK, not just uh, uh, punishing yourself. So past week, this is what's happened. As you can see, the ones which were undervalued proves my point. Valuation isn't the only factor. Didn't actually do phenomenally uh, uh, well. Well, the healthcare ones undervalued did well. Some of them overvalued. NVIDIA did phenomenally well. So valuation isn't the only factor because that was overvalued and yet it's up 5%. Disney did well. As you know, it's one of my special situation picks. Somebody called me and said, you're a genius. I said, what happened? Uh, so who are you talking to? And he said, uh, Disney went up. And I said, well, I didn't know. It was, I mean, I knew there was a lot of things in our favor, but I didn't know it had gone up 12% in a day. And I joked. I said, I bet they bloody mentioned AI in their board meeting, didn't they? And they said, you're a double genius. Yes, they did. I said, well, uh, it didn't take a genius to work that out. That sooner or later, they're going to mention AI. Uh, uh, that's not how, why I bought it. I bought it because value, growth, income, cash flow, Sortino, alpha. My strategy isn't... Oh, I'll just read a lot and try and be cleverer than everyone else. That's hard work. I don't like doing that. The spreadsheet does the hard work. It needs to tick all the boxes. Uh, ETFs, so past, I'm not going to really comment on these. Just be careful with some of the best performing ones. They are leveraged, so they can go down 29% or up 34%. They're leveraged. Do not do leverage. You'll blow your hands off. Market year to date, where are we on this update? NASDAQ's up 5.8%. The S&P's up 4 already year to date. Uh, and the UK markets are down 3. Well done, Britain. You've done as bloody proud again. But that's fine because most people on here are British and they can buy the foreign stocks. The government wants you to. They gave you a tax-free ISA, a tax-free, tax-dodging, tax-avoiding ISA and SIP, and they allow you to buy foreign companies. They actually, in economic terms, want you to because it helps our balance of payments by owning overseas assets and bringing the money over here. Remember Jim Callahan? Yeah, it really helps our balance of payments that we we didn't used to own enough foreign assets, and we still don't. What the Chancellor should be telling people is not, let me take your SIP money and put it in private UK companies. What you should be saying is, unleash your SIP to buy foreign companies which are doing well wherever they are in the world because it'll help our balance of payments. <sighs> He's not that sh sharp. Uh, okay, that's an eight-point difference pretty much nine point difference that's already opened up by middle of february between nasdaq and U uk markets nine percent difference already and we're only into the sixth week of the year that's more than one point one percent per week uh, this rate you know what's going to happen same as last year uh so who's pushing up the markets at the moment well it's those communications companies Interestingly enough, you don't hear that very often, do you? Communications companies, not since TMT days. Uh, for those of you who remember TMT, uh, technology companies up six, uh, and you've got healthcare. Okay, they're the top three riders. Now, how about this then? Uh, which factors? Momentum. Oh, that's lucky, Alpesh. You always tick the momentum box, don't you? Hmm, why do you do that? Because I don't like gambling on which one of these factors is going to win. I want to make sure my companies tick the momentum box. 
Tick the growth box, that's growth. Tick the value box, that's large cap value. Well, it sounds pretty obvious, doesn't it? Eugene Famer got the Nobel Prize in economics for that. You see those 18 books over my shoulder? I don't think there's one that I wrote which didn't mention this for the last 25 years. Then it got to the point where I said, they're not reading the bloody books or my columns or watching me on Bloomberg or BBC banging on about this, I think I better just do a weekly webinar until it's shoved down their throat and they just get it. Okay? You, of course, Think about logic. Of course you want to tick every box, because that way, if the market says momentum's the thing, we win. If it says value's the thing, well, we tick that box as well. You know what fund managers do? St. James's Place and all that? They don't do that. They don't do that. Okay. Markets over the past year, NASDAQ's up 42%. So if you're on the Great Investments Program and you are NASDAQ heavy, you should see have seen your pension go up at least 50%. S&P 500, which is more my 40, 50-year-old um, students and 60-year-olds who will be more broader market because they don't want the volatility of, say, NASDAQ, they should have seen theirs go up 20 to 40%, uh, uh, assuming you started 12 months ago. If you started sooner, then obviously be different and if you didn't follow me and just followed st james's place or any of those other uh pension managers that track the uk you should have seen your pension rise one percent don't worry drinks are on me not you you won't be able to afford it anyway at this rate uh but it really pisses me off now i really get angry if you see me on bbc morning broadcast you see how i get angry sometimes i'm really angry about how the pensions industry is being screwed uh my event in parliament and i've speaking to parliamentarians about this something has to be done i haven't got the time to work out what it is that has to be done for these people other than educating them top 10 s p 500 stocks well nvidia one of ours okay what i've got meta one of ours walt disney one of ours uber i had a couple of years ago but don't have so not one of mine uh applied materials advanced micro yes and yes lamb research we had a couple of years ago it's been on the list but i can't buy everything so i didn't have it back again uh but it's been on my broadcasts as you know because it's one of the ones that i particularly like but i can't buy everything like netflix i like and i tell you i don't own it but look it's going to go up and it did because i can't buy everything Okay, the bottom ones, ew, oh, oh, oh. there are some. This is a warning sign. There can be some. That's why you do need to pick. Not everything rises. For people saying, oh, in a rising market, or on a rising tide, all things, all boats rise. Well, no, no, look, they don't, right? FTSE 350, if you're into it, I'm not into any of these, not interested, but there you go. That's pure momentum. So don't buy off the back of any of that. And that's the opposite way. What have you got? That's, uh, oh. Okay, so let's look at S and P five hundred. Uh, 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 I'm I'm already twenty three minutes into it, and only only on slide twenty three. So I need to move it up because I've got slide one hundred and nine. I don't want to keep you here for one hour forty minutes. So this I still project going nicely upwards. Remember the last time it did that, it still had all of this distance to go. That's my best uh, forecast for that. Of course, it'll probably do this. You know, it'll it'll scare the bejesus out of you. Even last year, where the market did, before it wasn't just going a straight line. I mean, rarely. Although, having said that, I mean, wasn't that good? Twenty 2020 twenty to twenty twenty two, where it did go in a straight line, but that's unusual. Okay, uh, FTSE <laughs> doing sound effects of crashing and burning. Uh, NASDAQ, I'm positive on as well. By the way, my first column in the Financial Times, and I luckily kept a copy of it, uh, which I must pull up for these broadcasts. The first paragraph of the first column in 1999, I'm selling all my UK holdings and only buying US ones. It's in the paper. Thank God I wrote that and kept it as well. I will show it. I've shown it on past uh broadcast but i'll actually pull out the copy of the paper in future and there it is or you can go find it at the british library it was i think july 1999 there we go okay so i'm happy about that now i said apple i'm a bit worried about now the question to talk about with apple or anything else uh or my quality five as i call them is buy hold or sell well i'm not selling at the moment i'm holding what i've still got because whilst this is declining, which is worrying me somewhat, but we're not quite exiting yet. Well, wait till tomorrow's broadcast or Wednesday's broadcast. Uh, the buy, I wouldn't buy that right now because my thinking is it's more likely to drop to there 
I don't think it'll drop this far. But it's more likely to drop there in the near term. Uh, of course, if it breaks out, fine. And that might do. It might suddenly announce some amazing great news. Might still do. Uh, but at the moment, I continue holding what I've got. I wouldn't buy if I didn't own any. I wouldn't buy it right now. I'd rather wait until my next broadcast and I'm not selling any. Okay, we'll call that the Apple strategy, which is hold what you got. Don't buy any at the moment. Uh, and don't sell. So that's that. Alphabet uh, is only for my great investments only people. Microsoft. Now, this is one where I've still got some upside. I continue holding what I've got. I'm not seeing this decline yet. And therefore, I don't need to sell it. Would I buy it if I didn't own it? Yes. But if I didn't own it, it's really difficult to say, what would I do if I didn't own it? Because I can't imagine myself not owning it. What I'm trying to avoid is if this situation occurs, which is why I do these weekly broadcasts for you and let you know if that's anywhere near happening, I will be the first one to tell you what I'm doing. And if I get out, but at the moment, nothing I'm particularly worried about. Amazon, I'm afraid, is only for my great investments members. Disney, as you know, is a special situation. And that's this way. My team's got a bit carried away putting that there, and I've got to remove that. That's over-optimistic by them. That's them saying what would happen if it got to near highs. It's not going to happen. That's not going to happen, okay? Uh, so as you know, a special situation that we've had for a while now, and uh, it's going well. Made me look cleverer than I am. Why your pension fund? Look on YouTube for my videos on why your pension fund manager should be uh, put in prison. NVIDIA. Now, what do you do with a meta or an NVIDIA? And why do pension funds lose you money? So this is NVIDIA at the moment. And I had one or two students who, who said uh, they got out and they regret it because then it shot up. Same with meta. Okay. And during that period, you will remember, I kept saying to you guys, guys, I'm really worried about this. Um, uh, 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 Carwin and everyone. So what do you do with these new highs when you're worried? And I was worried here. So how come I didn't get out then? Because you'll know, because you follow my broadcast every single week religiously. And I said, well, I'm worried it's going to fall off because it's overbought around this period. Remember? Because I said, what if it goes like this? And I said, I'll just wait in case the monthly MACD crosses below its signal line. And it didn't. So I just said, well, I've got no reason to exit. So I'll just wait and wait. And then it went up. And I thought, oh, it's gone up. I didn't expect that, and I certainly didn't expect any of this, but I didn't have a reason to sell. So there were two reasons I didn't have a reason to sell. First of all, if it drops X percent, I'll sell Y percent. It just never dropped any meaningful X percent. It didn't even drop 10 percent. That's the first thing. The second reason was the MACD hadn't crossed below its signal line anyway, and I do these weekly broadcasts. So for all my clients who get the broadcasts on all my picks, they know exactly what to look for, where what I'm doing, and, and, and why. Um, so I don't sell prematurely. Now, do I expect this to continue rising forever? No. Can I see into the future of chip manufacturing? Nope. By the way, their uh, global head of sales was uh, and I were on the same board together when he was at NVIDIA in 2000. And um, I haven't been in touch with him recently, but I would not be surprised if he's now a billionaire. Uh, we had a board uh, called TIE, the Indus Entrepreneurs, T-I-E. Uh, we had four four people who went on to become billionaires off that board. Uh, the global head of sales for NVIDIA, uh, he wasn't global head of sales then. I think he was just UK sales. Uh, Gita Fisker, as in Fisker Motors, and um, Rishi Kosler, as in Oak North Bank. I know what you're all thinking. What went wrong with you? I know, I know. Hapal Rundawa, who sadly passed away last year, uh, he also went on to get that. And if you Google them, you'll see. Somehow they always managed to get a magazine article saying, meet the new billionaires anyway uh we had one hell of a board where i was in my 30s i learned a lot from these people okay nvidia so that's where we are so look it hasn't dropped x so i don't need to sell y simple as that and the macd is uh, as a measure of momentum it's still going up remote if it's going up that's positive if it's sideways that's a little warning if it's falling it's an amber warning if it falls below its signal line that is a red hot warning and i would not want to be holding anything when this is falling below its signal line okay simple as that and that's meta so how come pension funds mess up your pensions because this is a good example and look meta like nvidia is doing exactly the same thing it might be because meta is buying all of nvidia's chips that might be the reason why. Uh, whatever it is, I don't care. I don't care about the news and narrative because that is not something which is 
uh, scalable. It's not data. Narratives are not data, and data is what I want to go by. So this is why pension funds like St. James's Place screw up your pension. When when this is going up, or Fundsmith or Scottish Mortgage, yeah, they think they're clever. No, the market's going up. Everything's bloody going up. And even then, they mess it they mess it up because they buy like 1% of, of your money in there instead of 5% you know, uh, of your capital, 7.5% of your capital in there think about it warren buffett has 50 percent of his money in apple putting all your eggs in one basket and watching the basket when you've got the data and the knowledge is a lot more sensible than what fund managers do who are supposed to have the data and the knowledge it proves that they don't because they put so little money into every single stock it shows they have no confidence in their own abilities and they just don't know what the f they're doing so that goes up right and then it falls in a year and because they're not allowed to sell into cash because they're not allowed to hold cash. They've got to hold equities because that's their mandate. They can have about 5% cash max. They just get dragged down because when the markets fall, everything falls. So your pension loses six years worth of value. Look, this was 2016. This was 2022. You lost six years of your pension in one year, six years. So during this period when you were planning all your holidays, okay, and those expensive flights, you lost it all in one year. That's what pension fund managers and IFAs do. Because when the market falls, they can't do the one thing you hired them to do, which is to make you money or, worst case, protect the money you've made. They can't do either because they can't go into cash. I have no conflict of interest with you. So I'll tell you what I did. I'll tell you what I did. I don't want to tell you what you should do. I'll tell you what I did. Look, freaking MACD was falling. Momentum was falling from an overbought position, cross below signal line. I had to get out. That was it. That rule is not new. That rule's been in those books for 25 bloody years with a um, bazillion pictures, okay? Uh, uh, 18 books translated into five different languages, published by the Financial Times. I think there was a reason they were bestsellers. But you don't have to read the books because now we've got videos, I can tell you. Same old process. Didn't do anything new. In 25 years, same old process, okay? Uh, that fell and we had to get out. So when did you get back in? Oh, Bish, I heard timing the market's really bad. Timing the market? What? Selling once in six years? You call that timing? It's not timing, all right? So how'd you get back in? How'd you get back in? Well, it was on our approved filtered list, ticked all the boxes, but we could only get in if the MACD is not falling. So as soon as it went flat, we could get in because it was ticked all the value, growth, income, cash flow boxes. Oh, but isn't that charting? No, it ticked all the value, growth, income boxes. We also look at this information as well. It doesn't do too badly, does it, that information? And that 250% gain we could keep hold of because pension funds, they lost all of this, six years worth of gain. So by the time they got back, they only made 0% return anyway. That encapsulates how fund managers and IFAs F up. If you go to an IFA, they'll go, Ooh, yeah, that's why you shouldn't have meta. Or just hold it forever. Look, it went back up, didn't it? Yeah, you got a 0% return over 18 months and you just took your client through losing six years of their pension. So what did you do for your client? Well, I gave them the sweet Jesus, the Jesus scary, scariest year of their life. I lost six years of their pension in a year. Well done. Then what did you do over the last 18 months? I gave them a 0% return when the stock went up 250%. Why did you do that? Oh, well, you just got to buy and hold forever, don't you? I'm telling you, IFA is a salespeople uh they are really bad salespeople as well there's no law against this and by the way this can happen to any stock it can happen to nvidia look that's why i keep an eye on it and i'm looking for that that's my process but value growth income cash flow that's how we picked nvidia it hit the value growth income cash flow boxes not because i could see into the future of ai chips i've got ten thousand stocks i can't know everything Tesla, as you know, we got out in October. It was a special situation in January. Got out in October because I wanted to ease back onto my equity holdings. So I didn't hold it for the full 12 months. It was a special situation anyway. So we made whatever that was, return 68%. And since then, it's fallen off. Why am I continuing to look at it? Well, because it's a popular stock and it's still not one I'd do a special situation in or not. Meta, only for my great investments program people. Well, I've just shown you it. Uh, look at that. I went up 21% in a day. I got a message from a few of my My phone started buzzing like crazy that day. And they said, bloody hell. I have a couple of students who've got two times leverage on Meta. They're in their 30s. And so obviously in a day, they made 40% in a day. Now they're more risk loving two times leverage ETF they did on it. They give me a heart attack when they do that because what if that went the other way? But they know what they're doing. They like to do things like that. That's fine. As long as they're fully knowledgeable and they know the risks. Uh, 
uh, can I take credit for it? No, I've got to give credit to Mark Zuckerberg. Uh, so there we are. I've got a few questions, uh, and I'll come to those in a second uh, as well. Kishan and everyone else, thank you. I've got your questions coming in thick and fast. I will come back to those. Do not worry. I will come back to those. Uh, service now. all I'll tell you is it's done. It's one of my best selections from last year. All we did was value, growth, income, cash flow, Sortino, Alpha, and this has gone through the roof. <laughs> Uh, special situations are ones which don't quite meet, like Intel, don't quite, and still 12 month holding period, don't quite meet all the uh, rules, value, growth, income, uh, that did lo well last year, not well this year, which also reinforces the 12 month rule as well. Uh, why 12 months, Alpesh? Well, if you look at Intel since then, you'll think, oh, right, I see why. Or look at Crocs, which was one of ours from the past, where after 12 months, it just, like fruit, you should be picking stocks because they're undervalued and growing they're unripened but growing fast well if you hold them too long they're going to overshoot and they're going to rot and that happens a lot in the stock market and if you don't believe me this is why you can't just buy and hold forever look or look at nvidia okay this whole oh, i'll just buy and hold forever it'll be fine have you got the cast iron constitution to hold through an 80 percent drop in meta 80 percent you lose 80 percent of the value and your pension loses six years worth oh yeah yeah no i have i'll push you just buy and hold forever when i show people that they go i say if you've got that ability yeah how come you're overweight then because you seem to have really amazing discipline i don't have that discipline behold okay that's why I need to keep an eye on it, and I want to take the money, and I want to run when I need to run. Netflix. I don't own it, but like I said, special situation, and we picked it. Oh, they've changed the bloody thing. So anyway, we picked it when we picked it, and um, I think it was after their results, so it was somewhere around here-ish. Uh, and it, so the big results had come out, and I said, well, let's just keep an eye on it for everyone, and of course, it's gone up a, a fair bit since then. Uh, what is that, 50% up? Uh, since then and we're not overbought on it now why am i keeping an eye on it well it's a popular company i don't own it i can't own everything uh okay uh paypal look at just what let's let's look at before everyone thinks oh everything's easy in tech look macd's can also do this so don't think you only look at the macd i'm showing you this to show you popular big companies don't just Look at the MACD. You've got to look at value, growth, income, cash flow, Sortino, Alpha. All of those things have to come in. Okay. Oh, and don't, that's not, we need to start deleting some of these. They, they've put this in. That's not a projection. Okay. Don't forget the YouTube. Don't forget, we've got more coming. Don't worry. Why Your Pension Fell Series, Scottish Investment Trust is also on YouTube. We've got a million views on YouTube now and a blue tick on TikTok. Okay. This is popular with hedge funds. So I've picked this not for me. It's not for me. Uh, and I just wanted to show it. And of course, it's doing well. Uh, in hindsight, I wish I had picked it, but I said it wasn't one for me because it was a bit overbought and it still continued rising and has been. Uh, but it's not one for me. It's just popular with hedge funds, which I show. This is also popular with hedge funds and it's not for me. Uh, and then, of course, it shot up. I don't know why they keep putting those on. Uh, so that one's there and that's the sort of projection forward going forward on it. Uh, that blue tick's there on TikTok, so do feel free. We're now, I think, just shy of 300,000 followers on TikTok. Uh, and you've got a whole playlist of pensions, and I keep adding more pensions to it. Uh, so I've done Scottish Mortgage. I've done St. James's Place, a whole load of those. Uh, I've done London Fidelity, Royal London uh, Fidelity. I've done Vanguard Pensions. There's a whole bunch on there on um, how, what's in them, why they're destroying your pension as well. Uh, and do keep an eye out for me on LinkedIn because I'm a top voice on there. We've had lots of reviews. Do feel free to leave some. So these are the issues people said. I'm going to discuss one or two things in a second and answer your questions. Pensions, low returns over one to five years. How do we avoid it? For me, it's really simple. I'm going to, sh I, it has to be value, growth, income, cash flow. Croaky is from Goldman Sachs Wealth Management. I'll show you that in a second. It has to be momentum over the last six months. It has to be Sortino and Alpha. Of course, there are companies which are overvalued, don't grow, which can go up. That's fine. I just don't want to have that headache. Okay. This is what people said. What percentages out of 100 said it, i.e. some of them said two things, not just one. Okay. Problem. You or I, IFA spray and pray. IFAs will spray and pay, pray. They will put money into funds who will put money into other funds who will then put 1% into 100 different stocks. 
okay? And I keep doing these and showing these videos on YouTube to show you that not only is that what they're doing, but the fund managers have got a billion under management who are, you know, 26 and are doing that. And that's going to give you underperformance every single time, every single time. Uh, people hold on too long, as I showed you with Meta, and they don't know when to let go. Common problem. IFAs give you 0% return even in a year where the NASDAQ's up 55%, all the S&P 500's up 25%. You know what they'll say? Yeah, but I put you into an emerging market. Why would you want to go in the American market? You know, with those dodgy little companies like Microsoft. I put you into Vietnamese AI companies. Honestly, there's got to be a law against it. Uh, you can't do shoot on site, but closest. Fire on site. Too scared to sack their IFAs. I'm afraid it's a British disease. Politeness. Uh, I asked AI to do this, this image. AI has got a diversity problem. It's over-diversified. A bit like people's portfolios. The statistical probability of going into an IFA's office and finding that collection of people is pretty minimal. AI is over-diversified. Uh, this is what's happening. People are spending too much time looking at all of this because they're getting it wrong. Um, I joke that that's what my desk looks like. If you put all my team in one place, it's not far off. So is 40% realistic? I mean, let's shoot for the moon. Is 40% realistic? Don't be stupid, Alpesh. Of course not. Well, there are very rare circumstances where it is. It's just that it keeps happening. If the market has a strong tailwind, like in 2021 or 2023 when the NASDAQ was up 55% and the S&P was up 25%, then, yeah, you need that. You need all of these 10 conditions to be hit for 40% to be realistic. High Sortino stocks, what are those? Those are ones which generate high returns but low volatility or risk of missing them. In other words, they're consistent in their performance. And alpha, in other words, when the market goes up, they do a lot better. And if the market were to fall, they do better than the market as well. That's alpha stocks. And you're going to have to have Sortino and alpha because if you think about it, if you're trying to get 40%, even 20% in a year, you're going to need Sortino and alpha. You can't do it without unless you're taking mental wild risk by investing in some emerging market company in the hope they just discover oil off the coast of Cambodia, which I think is landlocked. Anyway, uh, off the coast of Austria. OK, and, you know, hoping their Navy discovers oil. Some of you will get that. Not the UK. It's just not going to happen. Or emerging markets. It's really going to be. You've got enough stocks out of the US to choose from. So why the hell are you looking elsewhere? Why doesn't Warren Buffett buy foreign companies? Second richest man in the world. Might be third now. If you can go to cash in a bad year, I just proved that. You're not going to get 40% on average if you lose six years worth of pension in one year. Because you're going to get it for five years. And then the sixth year, you've lost it all. So you're going to have to have the ability to hold cash. Your IFA will not let you do that. They will come to your house. They will tie you up. They will hold you hostage. They'll put a gun to your head and they'll take your money. They will never, ever, ever tell you to go to cash. Ask them, are there any circumstances which you tell me to hold cash? And they'll say, oh, I'm sure there will be. Absolutely. Well, why didn't you then in 2022? Right? Uh, if you monitor once a fortnight, you can watch my telegram because you've got to monitor it just in case. Look, is it worth monitoring? Well, yeah, if you want your pension to go up. Because, look, if you don't monitor it once a fortnight and say, I'll monitor it once every five years, then you'll miss that and you won't get this. And I, I keep showing Meta and, and Video as an example because that's what happens. That's the market right there. Uh, uh, if Also, if good years make up for bad, obviously, last year, NASDAQ goes up 55%. That's got to make up for the years when uh, it was flat, like 2022, where we were in cash most of the year. So I got nothing of a return. I got you know single digits. I can't get 40% in a year where the market's dropped 20% because there aren't companies that have been invented which go up in those kind of years. Well, not the kind that I'd want to invest in. You know, there might have been some oil exploration, gold digging company somewhere, but not, I'm not going to put my pension into it or my son's junior ISA into it. Crokey stocks? What are crokey stocks? Cash return on capital invested. Goldman Sachs Wealth Management have an R&D division called the Quantum Division. And I got a presentation off them about 15 years ago when I set up the hedge fund. Well, I was a few years into it. And I stole the slides. I put them in my program and I've used them ever since. I got lucky that I was at that lunch 
and so much of life is luck. I was able to steal those slides. And what they discovered is that companies with a high cash return on capital invested in the top quartile generate 30% per annum as a basket. Not every basket every year, not every stock in the basket every year. Otherwise, you'd have a bank account at 30%. Why would Goldman Sachs Wealth Management's wealthiest clients want 30% per annum? Come on. <laughs> They're the wealthiest clients. Otherwise, they'll bugger off to JP Morgan. I thought they'd want 10%. And safe, no. Rich people get rich by having unrealistic expectations, which then get met. And it's the job of bankers like Goldman's to make sure it happens. And croaky, I'll show you the slides in a second. I stole them. I don't have any problems showing them to people because it's not going to make Goldman Sachs go bankrupt, is it? Uh, if hold for 12 months, then reevaluate. Don't hold for one month. Don't trade it. Don't hold for too long. If sell anything which drops, at least have that rule. You might be able to find where you sell sooner, but at least that. Forget the UK one. Uh, uh, but those nine things are important. That's why I've had people message time and time again, like this individual, about how much better they're doing uh, taking my approach than the one by Legal in General, which gives them 4% per annum. Okay, this was 20% growth between 2012 and 2022 with Legal in General, 20% in those years. That's what she got. Now, let me tell you, if you take nothing away from this webinar, Please check your pensions and your workplace pensions and what you're getting. And I'll tell you why. If she, that lady who sent me that email, okay, in that period, if all this she did is track the NASDAQ 100, which just the index, and you might say that's unreasonable. Why would she? Absolutely agree with you. But I'll just give it as a comparator, okay? She would have got not 100,000 back. She would have got 482,000 back too ambitious. Let's say she just tracked the S&P 500, which is the 500 largest American companies. Okay, then she would have got 266,000 back from 100k. If she even just tracked the UK, she would have got okay, she would have got 24,000 pounds extra back on top of 100,000, which is bloody peanuts. And it's pretty much what she got. She got that. There's a reason Americans keep getting rich. Cuz domestic market they're not the cleverest people on earth. If you've met any of them, you know that. How come they keep getting rich? Because a few of them are really clever. They build the companies that the rest of them invest in. So what do we do? Honestly, they should just shut the FTSE 100 down. I've given up hope now. Disciplined approach, 40% hurdle. I put all of that into the spreadsheet. We want to tick the value, growth, income, cash flow, 10,000 stocks, including UK ones. I'll tell you now, there's no UK ones, which, well, there's barely any which will tick all my boxes. I'll show you them. I'll show you. It. For UK, I rarely find anything. Give me one second. I'm going to show you the FTSE 100. Uh, I'll show you the FTSE 250. Okay. Right. That's the FTSE 250 where I've done the same analysis. And you're telling me, find a stock out of these. I'll push, please. Well, no, because they all need to be green. I can't bloody find it. Okay, so which ones are ticking all greens? Uh, keep going up, keep going up. Uh, we got any here? Yeah, that one. Great, plus 500. Just. And I haven't got a peg ratio for it. Right? So, no, I'm sorry. The choice is too limited. I need a bigger choice. Uh, and they don't ever make it into the global best football team of my portfolio. 12 months, 15 to 40 stocks I'll hold and do the weekly updates. So let's carry on a bit forward. How did we do last year? Big mouth, how did I do? You'll remember I won the competition in the Financial Times back in 2004 to forecast the markets over a 12-month period, beating every other fund manager and analyst and all the rest of it. Same approach. I've had a few tweaks of improvement. So how did we do last year? These are the disclaimers I've got to give you. Please remember the market was up 25% on the S&P. I can't take credit for our returns when the market had a tailwind. If it has a tailwind, I will look a genius. Okay, I'm not a genius. Sadly, I came to that realization many years ago. The following is US stocks. I do select LSE and European ones. I don't buy them. I only buy US, but I select them because if somebody ever wants them, they're after speaking to me, nobody ever says, yeah. Our further filtered final list, okay, they came from that. So what we do is we filter the ones I showed you and then we filter it some more based on not just the accounts data of value, growth, income, cash flow, Sortino, but also based on a rising MACD. We also had our quality five, which are the two A, the 
two M's and the three A's. Uh, Microsoft, Meta, Apple, Amazon, Alphabet at that time. This is for last year, okay? And special situations from January. This is January to December. We do buy during the rest of the year, but I didn't include that. I didn't include, therefore, Costco, Intel, or Adobe because they weren't bought on the first week of January, okay? So this is only January to December. Does not include any overweighting. Doesn't include where I've bought, say, more Microsoft than something else or any leverage. Doesn't include that where I did have two times leverage in uh, Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, Alphabet doesn't include that in the performance figures. Okay. Uh, this was not a typical year. Much of 2022, for instance, was in cash. It does not mean any will be held into 2024 that I'm about to reveal to you um, as per our 12 month holding rule. So, with all those caveats, how did we do last year? And it's a return which I don't think we'll replicate possibly again in my lifetime. Who knows? Um, because it was 80 bloody percent because of all those factors I gave you. And these were the best performers. You can see them at the bottom end. But look at that. Same approach was used. Value, growth, income, cash flow, Sortino, rising MACD. And yet, Tapestry was down 1% and these were up. Now, some people, they'll say, oh, well, if you take out all the ones which did really well, you're just left with Tapestry, which didn't do well. I say, yeah, that's why we don't just pick one stock. Having said that, if I picked one stock and it happened to have been NVIDIA, I would have looked amazing. But I couldn't do that because it would be too risky last year just to have picked one. That's why you pick more than one. This is a this is a good number of stocks to pick, about 15 to 20. Okay. By the way, I had no idea, and I still don't because I haven't looked it up, what Sterling Infrastructure does. Right? Still don't know. Or what MedPace does, which was up 46%. That's because there was a market tailwind. I can't take total credit for that, but that's our approach. This is a letter we drafted for um, a, 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 somebody who joined our program because he didn't know how to sack his IFA. And we said, oh, just, yeah, we drafted this for him and said, yeah, use this. So if you want to know how to sack your IFA, that's it. Uh, let me just, uh, there's a few more questions we've got. So you want to know, how do you open a SIP or ISA? So I've taken Barclays, okay? You could go to Barclays or Huggies Downtown or AJ Bell or anybody else. Very simple. It's like opening a bank account. Some of you all know this. Two simple ways. You start with a bank payment into it to Barclays or Hargreaves or AJ, whoever you choose, uh, or you transfer your old pension into it. And they do all the transfers for you. People don't know that. Uh, this is free trade. They also will do that for you. They'll open the pension and you just create a transfer form. That's it. Simple. These are typical rates. These aren't accurate, actually, in the sense that um, there's small print with this. It's not 1.5%. There's a cap. You know, it's not $12.99 a month. I think there's a cap to that as well. So free trade have done it in a way where it looks cheaper for everyone else, but it isn't. These are all pretty much much of a muchness. Okay. Uh, how do you buy the stock in your SIP? Well, once the money's in the SIP, like any bank account, you say, I want to buy £500 worth of a company. You just type it in, place the deal. That's it. Now, I'm teaching most of you to suck eggs. Um, we also started last year doing this for fun, is having ChatGPT pick some stocks. I, I make it clear that is for fun. It picked Broadcom. Uh, but that's for fun. So I'm doing some of that for fun because I'm not going to trust ChatGPT at the moment with my pension obviously this is scottish mortgage i'm going to answer your questions in just a second this is scottish mortgage look what happened that declined 50 percent in 2022 because they can't go into cash they had tech companies all those years everyone said oh they're amazing i'm with scottish i'm with scottish mortgage i'm just doing incredibly well and then they lost six years of their pension in a year and they've not recovered since because why people invest based on name recognition as i've written in my books and my ft columns because there's academic research so what are we doing quick checklist Make sure you tick the value box. Balance sheet, cash flow statement, and PL is what companies produce. We need valuation, growth, income, growth in earnings, growth in profits, growth in sales. We need share price to be relatively low to profitability. But like take a Microsoft. If the valuation is relatively high, the growth number has to be really good to allow for that valuation. So it can still come into our list accordingly. Dividend yields are only about 10% weighting. They're not very important, but they are important. Growth is twice as important as dividend yields, and valuation is twice as important as growth. That's what the academic literature shows. Momentum's up there as well, as you've seen this year, uh, without which we would have not picked a lot of the stock. So that's why we know we have to look at it. Um, the Muppets will only look at one of these factors. Well, they might as well be gambling. They might as well try and cross the road blindfolded. Uh, that's a pretty way of looking at it. Okay. Important numbers. Tick all those boxes. There it is. Value, growth, income, 
Crokey, Sortino Alpha. Monitor once every two weeks for five minutes. 12-month holding period, 15 to 40 stocks if it drops 25% from the high since you bought it. Or sooner, if you watch my broadcast and become more risk-averse, then that's it. And I'd say about 15 to 40 stocks. Most of my students have. Warren Buffett has most of his money in the in eight stocks. Okay, you're not a billionaire. But nevertheless, uh, by the time you get past 20, you're, you're really not diversifying away. Let's say you assume to invest over 10 years. And with my help, but, but what I've taught you, you make 20% per annum, not 40, just 20. Okay, some years more, some years less. Let's say you've got 100K and you plan to add one and a half K each month. Well, over 10 years, that 100K becomes a million. 10, 100, 1 million. 10 years, 100K becomes a million. It looks like this. Of course, some of it's the money you've put in. You know what your IFL say when your returns stink? Why don't you add some more money so I can take more off you? I've just stopped trying to be polite to IFAs now. I've not met one who's sensible. Uh, okay. Actually, I've got one or two on the program. They are sensible, and they're using the program to advise their clients. That's sensible. That's clever because they realize they can't do it. Now, that's it. That's what it looks like. So that by year 9 to 10, you're going from 910,000 in a year to just shy of a million. So you're getting about $90,000 a year by year 9. In year 1, you get nothing. That's why most people don't bother compounding. Uh, and doing this because they say oh, I'll have to wait nine years. Who can wait that long? Okay, these are some of the my some of the companies that pay me to speak to their audiences. Uh, Barclays kindly doing one of my book launches back in the day. Those are the books where I specified all of this stuff, and this is me punching him in the face in the Financial Times when he came 14th, and I was able to prove his rubbish publicly. That's 2004. Patel is top foot two on a forecaster. By 2017, the market and the media had given him £9.2 billion. The media continued to build him up. Hargreaves, Lansdowne are to blame. The media is to blame. They kept building him up. They refused to say he's an idiot who doesn't know what he's doing. And he's destroying pensions. And he wants to launch again. He's a loon. Okay. Um, let me show you just what is in Warren Buffett's portfolio and Bill Gates's. You'll notice by the time, don't just buy these because they've got them. That'd be a stupid thing to do. You'll notice by the time they get to their eighth holding, they've only got 2.5% of their portfolio in there or 1.25% of their portfolio. They don't have much in there by the time they get there. And that's Goldman's, uh, what's in there out of interest, okay? This is croaky. That's one of the most important things for me, cash return on capital invested. What does it show? So this is Goldman Sachs's quantum division. Why I need croaky in the top quartile is because 30% per annum is what you generate if the company is in the top quartile, okay? Not every year. Look at that. In the financial crisis, 2007, 2008, no company got 30% per annum. Some years they do more, some years less. Companies in the top quartile buy Cash return on capital invested. What is that? Post-tax cash flow. Total capital invested in the business. In other words, you bought a machine and it just prints money. That's literally the ideal example of croaky. You know when people say, oh, that's a license to print money. What they mean is, wow. Well, yeah, those companies generate 30% per annum. Not every year, not every company in that, but we need to tick that box. We, we absolutely have to tick that croaky box. Okay. And, but that's not enough. It won't be enough. I also need them value, growth, income, cash flow, Sortino, alpha. Simple as that. Simple as that. And this is what protects. It's not about the money you make. It's also about the money you keep. And it's just making sure nothing's dropped. Is it worth the effort? Yeah. Cause it's a freaking pension. It's worth the effort. Okay. This is a typical portfolio of what I was sent. What people will have, they'll have way too many funds, which are doing next to nothing. And they'll have a few UK companies which are producing bugger all returns. That's your typical pension. Okay. They've got an IFA who's put them into a ton of name recognition rubbish and junk. If you look at this, and this was in the past six months from January. So one of the biggest bull markets we've had in history, this had had only three entities which had gone up over 10% in that period. And the rest were, look, I don't care if you're preserving capital. They're, not, they're actually finding new ways of losing it. That's what worries me. This is another one. 
uh, and you can see some of those. I can't produce these videos quick enough to be able to tell people where the errors are. Uh, thank you. Here, struck a chord with me. I have a portfolio with Bruin Dolphin. Oh my God. May I send you a download of Excel? Absolutely. Thousand companies scattered. I get dozens of these every week emails from people. This is another client uh, who sent me this. This is their old portfolio, and that's worrying. Okay, they've got one or two good things. They had Microsoft and that, but the, the thing is, oh, great. They did one or two things right. Too much doing poorly. So that doesn't help. Um, I want to build a company bigger than St. James's Place. Well, at least a billion-dollar company floated on the stock market as an alternative asset manager where I don't manage the money. We show people how to do it. We give them the data, and we give them the knowledge. So they've got the transparency of data, and they've got the know-how to do it themselves with whichever fund manager, broker, SIP, they want to buy the stocks in their own name so they can see three in the morning what they own themselves, not having somebody put it through multiple intermediaries charging fees, uh, and we don't want to charge them fees either. Uh, as simple as that. That's an alternative investment manager. Uh, that's one person I trained up. She works now actually at Polar Capital. She worked for me for two years as my assistant, then moved to Newton. Uh, now she manages billions at Polar. She'll have been corrupted like the rest of the money will do that to you. Can't hold cash, but I can train anybody to learn to do this, can train anybody to do it. That's me at university when I formulated all of this. Uh, it's me winning the prize in the FT. Uh, and then somebody said, well, why don't you, out of your fund, why don't you make this data available? And I said, well, on what basis? Why? Uh, um, and we realized that actually it makes sense. Why not make this available to people? Because after all, I talk about it often enough in the news, got great reviews from you know billion-dollar hedge funds and uh, Financial Times, Coots, uh, BBC, and so on, American Express. So why not make it available? And then we opened it up to clients to give them all of this and just got such great reviews. AlpishPatelReviews.com if you want to see the reviews. Um, so if you would like to be part of that journey and you want to have the data that I've shown you and have it done for you and handheld, you still manage your own capital. There's no ongoing fees. It's a one-off. It's a one-off for life. And I take on people during the webinars. I want to get to about 250 and then then it won't be me doing the teaching. I mean, for the first 250, it'll always be me for life. Um, but after 250, it'll be other people teaching. But for the first 250, it'll always be me. For the first 250 charter members, it'll always be me teaching them. We thought, well, how can we do this? How can we give them all this data, one-off, all these reports, all of this? What would it be worth? And we said, well, if they've got a portfolio, which even in one year goes up an extra 10% thanks to our help, and they've got a 500K portfolio, then that's 50K they've made. If they've got a 300K portfolio, and it just goes up 10% extra thanks to our help, in one year, they'll have made £30,000. In one year, they'll have made £30,000, or 15% on a 100K portfolio. And of course, they won't have 100K. They'll keep going up and up and up. So we priced it where it would become a no-brainer. Somebody had written into me and said, it's a no-brainer. and the thing that people said they wanted the most wasn't what I own, which I tell them, wasn't access to just the data. It was actually access to me. And so we said, well, for the first 250, you can have unlimited access to me. So you've got the education and you've got the data. Our aim is to get this to eventually there'll be other people teaching others uh, how to do it, given the data and having the one-to-one -one calls. But to get this, and it's updated each month, all the data and the daily updates on the market, is to get this to be bigger than St. James's Place, basically. That's it, because every one of their clients is poorly served. They've got 900,000 clients, and that's what I'm gunning for. I want every single one of their clients to move over. That's the ambition. It's as simple as that. Okay, so they wanted not just the data I found. They wanted access to me. There is a whole load of educational material I give them access to, okay, but they just wanted the access to me. That was a good year. That was back all the way back in 2021. So last year wasn't an aberration. 2021 was a great one as well. A 20% return on 500K, that's a 100K return. And that's one year. Can't guarantee it. Can't guarantee the future will be like the past. But if you do want to be part of this, well, in the webinars, I open it up. And in the webinars, I give a 40% discount, webinar discount. Outside of that, it goes back to full price because then I'm busy and so on. But that's where you go. And we've reduced it to that. It's a one-off payment. You can do it in installments. Uh, once well, Our ambition eventually is to get venture capital investment into it and then float it. Because if St. James's Place 
can be in the FTSE 100, then I've got a moral obligation to knock them off it. Okay, it's as simple as that. I'm going to answer your questions now as we go on as well. So let me know your questions. Uh, uh, what is a good source for Sortino ratios? Well, we calculate it. So we take the share prices and then the formula for Sortino, you can just Google uh, and it'll tell you. Uh, yeah, they have different Sortinos. So the I, I, I use I use the standard formula. Uh, and you should ask those companies what formula are they using. Just make sure it's a pretty broad-based standard one. Uh, where do you find Goldman's croaky stocks list? Here. We, 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 can you see that? We create that. We create that. We, we've got, I sent you the formula. You've got the formula. You pull the data out from the, from the balance sheet, cash flow statements, and P&L. Um, and if you can't, then you've got to leave it. Uh, unfortunately, but you know, the more things you leave, the more risk you're taking. But I think it's vital and incredibly important. I'm just going to put this one down here and push this one higher. Okay. Uh, now, who we've got looked at a colleague's workplace pension yesterday. Five year total return was 3%. I know, Phil. I know. Liam, how would you deal with monthly contributions on a smaller growing portfolio? Keep in cash, go through the whole process each month. Assume not, as this will increase. So sometimes people say to me, well, look, Alpish. In January, I've got so much money to invest. So you'd open a tab on Excel, and these would be January picks. Then, let's say in March, you've got one. You'd open that for 12 months from March. Now, you might say, well, wait a minute, that's going to give me a lot of stocks, and I've only got less money. If you've got less money, then you might just concentrate on a few stocks, watch them carefully, and say in January, I'll buy these five, and then in February, I'll buy the same five from February, but call it dollar cost averaging from as if you're holding from January. Uh, so that's one way in to doing it, okay? Uh, any special situations at the moment? No, I think the ones that I mentioned, Disney, I still like. That's a, I think that was a special situation. It didn't tick all of them. So I'm still in Disney, and I'd still buy more Disney today personally. Okay, what um, do you suggest a ratio of funds, ETFs to individual stocks in a SIP? Now, that's a really good idea, a uh, really good question. Let me show you what I show clients um, on how to decide how much of your money should be in each. And I took this from Goldman Sachs Wealth Management. If you've got 50 million, they'll do it for you as well. Uh, 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 what it is, is this. And it's not controversial, which is why I show it to people. Okay. Oh, thank you. A couple of you have gone through. Thanks. I just noticed that. Uh, welcome on board. Now, here we go. One second, one second. So that's from Goldman Sachs Wealth Management. Now, I think that's conservative. My wife tells me I've got 25 years to retirement, so I'll have about 90% in stocks and 10% in cash. Now, depending on where you are on this, you might say, well, actually, Alpesh, I want to have more ETFs. Why do you have exchange-traded funds? You have exchange-traded funds because you want lower volatility. So you do that for less volatility, okay? Uh, that's roughly how you decide. I'm giving a very quick uh, answer here. Arun, buy more Amazon Alphabet. Can't give you individual advice because uh, I don't know you. Uh, with the drop X, sell Y strategy, if stock falls 10%, Will there be buy volume for your limit sell order to go through? We're pretty much in very liquid stocks. And unless you're trading massive sizes, I don't think you're going to have a problem, Kishan. Uh, Alpesh, thoughts on this recession and our stocks? Uh, none. I don't care what they say about recession. Statistically, a recession being announced is the start point of a big 12-month move up in the stock market. So I'm glad there's a recession announced. I don't care about narrative. I care about data, okay? Because uh, data produces me money. Narrative gets me confused. And you and everybody else. Look at social media. How often do you see narrative uh, every day? But nobody ever looks at data. People will go, oh, you know what happened? Yeah, a lot of people think this. Where's the data? Okay. Um, who, who, which countries people do you think trust their media sources and governments more do you think it's the chinese people or do you think it's the british people uh and what do you think those percentages are now you could probably formulate a narrative on either there was some data which was just released today which shows the chinese rightly or wrongly trust their government more than we trust ours and you might say well bloody good reason whatever it is i'm saying unless i've got data i could make up any old narrative it's interesting what the data is. I mean, we might have to question the data and see, well, what was your methodology for collecting all of that information? Um, but, you know, I'd rather have the data than just try and say, well, it feels to me like. My wife has this wonderful phrase. Oh, 
um, my friends don't X, Y, Z. And I'm saying, you know, it's a really small sample size, sweetheart. You know, so if ever I tell her anything, she'll say, well, my friends think that, da, 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 or my friends didn't used to do that. Or when I grew up, I'm like, yeah, you know, you come from a very, very small data set uh, to make massive inductive reasoning jumps. Uh, that's us. The closest to us is the DIY investor. The thing the DIY investor doesn't have is the proven process, and they're not research-based, uh, and they don't have hand-holding with an expert. If you don't have the transparency of data and hand-holding with an expert, it's still a problem. Um, if you're not going to do that, then um, the next best is not a fund manager or IFA. There's just too many Xs. It's still you. It's still you. It's still you, and it's not these apps. Because if you look at it, just look at it. What is it? It's still you, okay? Um, delighted to have a lot of good uh, references. The Parliament event that I've got at the House of Commons, you're all welcome to attend. There's the sign-up link, alpishpatel.com forward slash chn. There's a dinner afterwards for great investment program people only. Thoughts on Nikkei? I don't at the moment. I know the Japanese markets did well last year, but I've got enough choice uh, already with the US market. So I'm not looking at Japan uh, at all. NVIDIA is a solid company. Price continues to go up in the long run. The share will be worth more in the long run. Yeah, it will. But the long run is made up of the short run. And the short run could see me losing six years worth of gains, as you've seen in the past. I mean, you know, look what happened with this. You know, tell me Meta isn't a solid company, which dropped 80%. You say, no, it's a load of rubbish. Well, why did it go up 250% then? So in the long run doesn't help me because in the bloody wrong, long run, I have to go through losing 80% of the value of a holding, six years of my pension and missing out on a 250% gain because it brings me back up to where I was 18 months ago. So that long run analysis meta proves that it is too simplistic, my friend. Appreciate, Lucas, what you're saying, but look at what the ramifications of what you've just said are for any other person. And this is why people keep screwing up their pensions, because they think the long run is smooth. Oh, there'll be a little bump. It'll be about 1%. Don't worry. If it was only 1%, I'd be happy. But with a Meta, it was 80%. With uh, NVIDIA, recently, it was 68%. Tell me about your long run. I haven't got that appetite. You know, others have other questions. Otherwise, I go GB News financial reporter Liam Allegan seems to be a very detail oriented person with commentary backed up by analysis. Uh, 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 d thank you, Theo. <laughs> thank you, Liam. Okay. Do you suggest a ratio of funds ETFs? I think I've answered that one. Right, guys, I better go because I've been over an hour. I didn't mean to be over an hour. For all those who've joined the program in the past or presently, Thank you very much indeed. I very much look forward uh, to speaking to you in person. Are these webinars every week? Yes, they are. I was in the Maldives last Wednesday, so I couldn't do it last Wednesday. Uh, but generally, I'm in the United Kingdom. How do I buy an ETF two times stock? Sorry if it's, it's not a stupid question. You'd go to Hargreaves Lansdowne. Please, Dwayne, leverage. I'm not recommending it. Don't do it, Okay. If you go to Hargreaves Land and say, I want two, you go in the website and you put in Microsoft, let's, and the number two, it'll pop up because you put in the number two. Don't do it. Okay. Um, uh, Stephen, yes, yes. Okay. Thanks, everyone. I am uh, going to go now. I've got to go. Where am I? 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 Oh, I'm down here. Thank you all very much for watching. I will speak to you soon. Thank you.